All right, thank you so much for staying with the Monday report. The conversation was still going on in different during the break. Let's drop you in. Keep the views coming. I was actually just looking at quite a number of them. There's so many. Two, two, four, two, two. We'll try and sample a few of them. At Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya hashtag Monday report. Let's start with you over there. You have the microphone. Just state your full name and what you do and your question or comment. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Julia Awar, and I represent the unemployed. The unemployed reason being, uh, my company did shut down last year in October, and uh, it's been tough. And uh, as we've been seeing the trend, just like uh, Stephen mentioned, every other day there's someone losing a job somewhere, and it's really getting bad. And uh, it has gotten to a point. I'm even worried. I'm a sad human because. I do not know where to start because it's been tough just from just losing your source of income. And yes, we speak every other day. This has been a conversation. Actually, I went, uh, I went viral because I was speaking about it. I'm a mom, a single mom, and um, I have school fees that needs to be paid. My son was just joining grade one in January. You have books to, to buy with the CBC... Uh, system of education you have like a whole list of books to buy then there's school fees to be paid and there is the normal usual bills to be paid every single day and we listen and we talk about it but what are the solutions we feel like it's just us ranting and ranting and ranting but there is no light at the end of the tunnel and i uh, i believe like uh, mr gitai said it all starts from as much as it's political, it also starts from us. We choose these people. We give them power. So right now, as a Kenyan, we need to be sitting down and actually thinking, why are we recycling these leaders all over again? And they're the same people who are putting us in this mess that we are in. So that's my take. And we just need, I, I just... We sometimes just want to know that we're being listened to and that things that are being done because we are suffering. If, if you don't mind me asking, what, what happened before you closed down and what do you think would have made sure that you did not close down? What, what circumstances do you wish would have changed? What would you have liked to see? Um, for us, uh, before closing down, okay, uh, there had been issues going on, so we knew maybe we might thrive or not. Was this uh, an issue of taxation? Was this an issue of competition? Was it an issue of people not paying? It was the issue of taxation with the finance bill that was passed. Okay. Yes. And uh, the company wasn't able to keep us again. And uh, in October, we did shut down. And uh, all of us went home. And it's been so many, uh, there's so many people, and we've seen so many companies also doing the same. And right now I was thinking, you sit at home, and uh, you're browsing, and you're looking at, for jobs. It has gotten to a point you can't, even getting an apology for that email you sent, you cannot. People will say, go the business way. Where's the capital? When I was working, I was living from hands to mouth. I'm a single mom. So... I have my bills, I have my nanny there, I have my, school, uh, my son's school fees to be paid. So by the time the company is shutting down, you can only think of survival for the next few months. So when someone tells you business-wise, and there's someone here who is talking about business and they're saying things are bad, things are thick. Yeah. Yes. So when you hear advice that you should start a business, you wonder how you're going to start it. Yes. But have you ever thought of trying to take advantage of the government initiatives that are there? They're always flouted in front of you. Where's your fund? Yes. Youth the, Enterprise Fund. Yes, they have. Yeah. Um, I, I, actually, I, I tried uh, trying to just uh, research and see how to access them. Yeah. But you see, you go there and uh, you're told you must have a collateral. You must have an already established shop running and i don't so how do i start so for them to give you that you must have something but i don't have that money to start this business oh, wow. so okay. it is really crazy all right yes thank you for sharing just pass the microphone in front of you start with your name and tell us what your thoughts are uh, i'm grace jerry from lango kubo Madare north i'm an employed youth but i'll be speaking on behalf of the Boda Boda operators. I'm not a Boda Boda operator, but my dad is. Now, the cost of living in a traffic, do you know what I'm saying? 
petrol imeongezeka diesel imeongezeka and then ikiongezeka mzai na bidi ameongeza price ya fear sasa kama ni price alikuwa analipisha 50 bob itabidi ame increase igende paka 100 bob then customers wanasema ah hiyo ni kubwa siezi make siezi manage kulipa hiyo fare nenda am expected ku maybe kufanya vitu zingine sasa na opt wana opt kutembea mguu sasa wakitembea mguu mzee na bid like the whole day hakuna kitu ataan ataka tu hivyo then akuja home madena mwambia wewe leta pesa ya chakula leta pesa ya rent mzee anamwambia mimi sina madena wananikaa na danganywa anamwambia eh ni kama watu kuna mpango akando mahali huko ndio unapeleka anga pesa sasa inaleta issue home sasa inabidi mzee i have kwa kusiku abebe wateja usiku juu lazima watatembe usiku wataogopa kutembea itabidi wamepanda boda boda na wakipanda sasa itakuwa riski juu anaweza abeba then akifika na hapo mbele ya kihome apatane na wezi wamwitishe pesa na hata akibebe usiku inabidi atumie kitu kama muguka ndo asilale na manage kupata hiyo pesa hiyo za ku maybe rent and school fees and all that then kuna hii shingine ya ku renew license nasikia ki complain at Tukiruka mwaka governor in increase license. Tukiruka mwaka inaongezea license. Sa, nasikia tu akicomplain ati sijui nini nini then at you can increase wa hana hiyo do. So inabidi ametekio risk ya kwenda kuwak bila hiyo ku renew license yake na akipatana na karao karao akimshika kwende hiyo bike kuko kwa county government ni 20k seriously 20k na tay motorbike si yake amepatiwa na mse aende afanye kazi amlete 300 jioni na the rest sasa ndio tutakuja tukule home sasa 20k seriously atapata wapi okay. thank you uh, my name is Marion Guy from National Taxpayers Association I work as a project officer for tax justice and uh, i think i'm going to point out uh, a couple of issues that uh, some of my colleagues have mentioned to begin with i think the kenya's economy is is really bad the economic shocks are really affecting the cost of living uh, and for this matter you if you look at the finance act for the past uh, like say three years yeah. every year we have new uh, taxes introduced into the finance act i think it's come to a point in kenya you sleep not knowing what kind of tax will be introduced next year through the finance act because the government is really struggling to to raise revenue but then we come here and also ask ourselves what does this money do is this uh, are the taxes that we pay worth the services that we get then we go back to the question of whose responsibility is it is it entirely the government or as citizens do we play a role to actually hold the government accountable for our taxes because in my opinion uh if we have prudent use of resources i think the issue of everyday care singing we are increasing the tax base we are increasing the tax base is going to reduce because what is the essence of increasing the tax base we increase the tax base because we have we want to have as many people on board paying taxes but at the same time paying minimal taxes as possible but in kenya it's actually the opposite every year we have increased taxes yet we still have poor services yet yet we still have our vat rising up every day we still have excise duty rising up every day so what does this mean what does this mean also then for the smes actually when i saw the turnover tax that was supposed to uh, be operationalized from the 1st of january this year i was i was a bit um i, I was a bit disappointed because you know for an economy we all know that uh, based on our statistics Uh, not just in Kenya even across Africa SMEs contribute a large percentage to the GDP and in most countries SMEs are the like the, the majority people so if we don't give a, uh, have a good conducive environment for SMEs to actually grow and uh, thrive yeah. where are we going to look for these jobs the government is not going to look for jobs to create jobs out of the blues we are supposed to empower the smes the, it's the role of the government to have trade agreements across regions yeah. so that even if we have a production market then whatever we are producing is actually going out and mtu kama auctioner via to basi his goods are moving okay yes but All i right. think in kenya it's become uh, a bit of a challenge no so just one last thing yeah very briefly one last thing uh on issues of incentives tax incentives yeah why wouldn't the government actually give the smes these tax in incentives that are actually given to multinational companies so that they can be able to actually grow our economy okay thank you roy what are the quick wins then i'll, then I'll come to you over there um I, I think we ended up in this situation because there, we, we have we have people who think short term. 
a lot of people think short term. If you notice that uh, CEOs of banks, by the way, have got three to four year contracts, by the way, so most of their thinking is confined to that. You look at uh, government, it is a uh, five year term, by the way, so they think, okay, we might not make it for the second term, so they think five year short term. But we don't have people who are thinking into the 10 year, 15, 20 year, 30 year kind of uh, kind of thing. Yeah. So we never put in structures that can be able to benefit people in the long term. For example, let's talk about uh, employment, uh, job creation, all right? We're now talking about the youth and we're looking at certain things that we've been told that current jobs are going to be replaced by AI, robotics, by the way, and automation. Yet we have people in campus who are studying for the jobs that are going to be replaced by those three things. Doesn't make sense. All right. Number two, you, you basically have been to, we talk about our creative, our talented youth, by the way, and yet use the word unemployment in the same sentence, which to me is an oxymoron. I mean, it's ironic. All right. That you've got so much talent, but you still have it uh, uh, not employed. And I think this is a quick win. Facilitating the creation of jobs for, uh, for a different avenue. Right now, You've got graduates who are coming out of campus, by the way. So let's say 50,000 are the ones who are graduating every single year. So next year, I mean, your chance today of getting a job as a graduate is one out of 50,000, Bob. I mean, 50,000 uh, graduates. Next year, another 50 will graduate. So in other words, maybe 10,000 were taken. So 50,000 plus 40,000, your chance of getting a job is now one out of 90,000. And the subsequent years continue and your chances of getting a job are actually coming down. So the thing is, what are those jobs that we're fighting? Now, if you look at um, our parents, they all came up with this script, become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a pilot. That was like a template, all right, for all those. If you ask this generation what they want to become, they want to become DJs, they want to become actors, they want to become poets, they want to become musicians and bloggers, vloggers, and some career choices that we have not heard of. The question is, where are the institutions to support those career ambitions? Yet we know every house has got that person who the parents introduce and say, this is my firstborn, the lawyer, uh, that one is the engineer, let us skip this one who's number three, then go to the businessman who's number four. <laughs> you, you, you ask, why did they skip number three? <laughs> what is that? It's a musician, it's a creative, all right? But the thing is, all these families have got those particular people who we can actually take advantage of. All right. The thing is, where are these musicians, where are these artists, what can we be able to do? What are those structures? And they're quick wins. You see, we are talking about we, we spoke of the big four agenda. All right. But the thing is, you have to train people to actually take up those particular jobs. But a creative, an artist, somebody who's talented in something, why are you taking them to school when they already have the talent? It is a quick win. The thing is, I also say that content, which is basically what creatives produce, all right, is an export product. It has appeal beyond our boundaries. Okay. That can be used. Okay. We were just talking to, um, to my colleague here, and we were saying, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, there are different things that we need to start thinking about, like, for example, value chains. All right? If you look at a value chain, for example, I've got creatives who are very good in designing furniture. All right? The question is, when you go to a furniture outlet, you buy a seat. If you take that seat to a house in high rise, all right, it occupies 90% of the space. It goes to Buruburu, 70% of the space. It goes to a house in Runda, it takes 20% of the space. Who says our houses are standard? Why can't we now start creating furniture that actually fits into those particular houses and it now begins to create jobs for people who are uh, designers of furniture? Then we go to Kenya Association of Manufacturers because these are young people who have no production capability. The production capacity is here. And they are closing down, yet there's somebody who can design something that he can use, all right, that can now be used. Then we come from there, I get another group of creatives called interior designers who come to your houses and actually fix those houses and give you furniture that has been uh, made for your particular space. We have a circle for creatives because if a, if a dancer or a comedian went to the bank and asked for a loan, what do you think the answer would be? Leave us, alone. Leave us alone, exactly. But how then do you expect creatives or the, or the next generation to grow their careers without the participation of financial institutions? There's nobody who's thinking like this in government. There's no one who's actually thought, oh, yeah, by the way, the solutions are right here. And we have the institutions to be able to, the KAM has the facilities to do that. We have the capacity to do that. As the circle, we can now finance you to redo your house 
with furniture that has been uh, manufactured by them and designed by creatives. Those are young people. Okay. All right. Those are young people who can be able to get jobs. Job, you have to the right of reply on this one. Yes. Uh, I, I like his uh, uh, line of thoughts and uh, um, can also look at, at it differently. Uh, where we are currently, if you look at our balance of payment and the balance of trade, uh, in fact, we're only exporting 613 billion Kenyan shillings uh, worth of goods. Uh, what we're importing is about 1.7 trillion uh, uh, Kenyan shillings worth of goods. You can see there's a huge disconnect uh, between what you're importing and what you're exporting. Now, coming back to what he's saying, if we don't own what we are producing locally, even if we integrate, even if we do backward and forward integration, but there is high consumption of what is imported. We don't have uh, loyalty and uh, patriotism over what is being produced locally. We will not get there. So it's very important we look at how we are going to, e to reduce on the level of importation in this country. So that in these lies the jobs. So that in these lies our wealth. So that in these lies the value integration between one sector and the other. I like his idea. But can we be intentional at the government level? Okay. Come up with real policies. In fact, these policies are in place. Yeah. It's only a question of now looking at what is, can we locally manufacture in abundance so that there can be exclusive local sourcing okay. at the government level or the private sector level. So that when this is done, these jobs that we are crying here all about are going to be found. Okay. We are in a very pathetic situation because as a country, we are at about 39% level of unemployment. Probably you can put the statistics right. If we are at that level, if we just integrate one or two sectors like now the T sector, we say that now we not, will not be importing, or sorry, exporting 3% of uh, processed uh, tea, but we'll be doing 25%. Okay. In fact, the jobs that are likely to be created, formal jobs there are about 90,000. Then, out of the job, uh, formal jobs, there are other informal jobs, and then there are some other dependents, of which is times four. You can now imagine the number of jobs that are coming out of this. Yeah. We are talking about the cotton to value chain integration. By only uh, taking one or two uh, directives from the government, the creation of jobs from 50,000 uh, that are currently uh, operating under the, AC, uh, under, the, uh, under the EPZ to about 225,000 jobs. So you can see, it's just a question of being intentional as private sector, as government, to see if that these jobs are, are being created. It is in these that the, 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 the backward integration you're talking here and the forward integration, a creation of the markets, and also integration with uh, those who are in the, in the, in the farming sector. I'll take a very quick break. Yeah. Yeah, just one comment. Just one line. The, the thing is, when you talk about integration of yeah. different sectors, by the way, we're also now talking about the financial sector. Yeah. Because the thing is, youth are considered risky, uh, unbankable, and basically, uh, banks are risk averse, especially to that large demographic. But we are now becoming a very large group of, um, of, of, of youth. The question is, how then do you facilitate financial inclusion? Yeah. I like some of the things that government had done. Like the Movable Property Security Rights Act. Because every time you go to the bank, by the way, and you're asked, do you have land? Do you have a title? Do you have a receivable? Do you have a logbook? Do you have those kind of things? The youth do not have them. But you see what they have is intangibles. They have things like art that we can actually, they, that music can actually be used as collateral for those particular loans under that particular act. It's just actualizing some of those particular things and now saying, all right then, what do we need to do to actualize this? That a young person comes and says, I have nothing to my name except this art. Mm. And then we can actually use that as collateral for a loan. I have nothing to my name apart from the song that I have actually written. And the mechanism is there. You've got Kikobo, you've got Kipi, you've got Kefis, I believe. You've got all these institutions, by the way, who if, if somebody sat down and yeah. coordinated those particular activities, you'd actually find that there are solutions to the young people when it comes to finance, when it comes to opportunities. I mean, people are singing at home. You know, we should actually have uh, the, we talked about Studio Machinani, yeah. but again, um, it's, it's not it's, being actualized. It's right. exactly being I, I still see a lot of reactions coming through. I have to take a quick break. When I come back, now it will be your turn to close up this conversation because we're also running out of time. Keep your views coming on 22422 at Trevor Citizen TV Kenya. We'll run some of them underneath your screen. So, back in bed.